SpaceX's ninth integrated test flight of the Starship system, designated Flight 9, launched from Star Base, Texas, with ambitious objectives for both the Super Heavy Booster, Booster 14, and the Starship Upper Stage, Ship 35. This report provides an objective analysis of the mission's execution, performance metrics, and the subsequent anomalies that resulted in the loss of both stages, commonly referred to as Rapid Unscheduled Disassembly, RUD. The flight, while not achieving all primary goals, yielded critical engineering data essential for the iterative development of this complex launch system. The primary objectives for Starship Flight 9 included a successful liftoff and ascent, a hot stage separation maneuver, a controlled boost back and entry burn for Booster 14, leading to a simulated landing attempt in the Gulf of Mexico, and a suborbital trajectory for Ship 35 culminating in a controlled atmospheric re-entry and splash down attempt in the Indian Ocean. A key secondary objective involved the deployment of dummy Starlink satellites from Ship 35's payload bay. This mission was designed to push the flight envelope and gather performance data on critical systems under realistic flight conditions. The planned trajectory involved Booster 14 powering the ascent for approximately 2 minutes and 45 seconds before separating from Ship 35. Following separation, Booster 14 was to perform a boost-back burn to reverse direction an entry burn to slow its descent through the atmosphere, and a final landing burn for a soft splashdown. Ship 35 was to continue under its own power to reach a suborbital apogee before orienting itself for atmospheric re-entry. Booster 14, powered by its array of Raptor engines, executed a nominal ascent phase, successfully lifting the integrated stack off the launch pad. Engine performance during ascent appeared consistent with pre-flight expectations based on available telemetry. The critical hot stage separation sequence was initiated as planned, with Ship 35's engines igniting while still attached to the booster, a complex maneuver designed for increased efficiency. Following separation, Booster 14 successfully it performed its boost-back burn, demonstrating control authority and engine reignition capabilities in flight. The subsequent entry burn was also initiated, further validating the booster's ability to manage its descent profile. However, during the final phase of the descent, specifically during the terminal landing burn sequence intended to slow the booster for a controlled splashdown in the Gulf of Mexico, a significant anomaly occurred. Telemetry and visual data indicate a loss of control and structural integrity, leading to a catastrophic failure of Booster 14 just prior to reaching its target splashdown zone. While the precise root cause is subject to ongoing investigation by SpaceX engineers, preliminary analysis suggests potential issues with engine reignition reliability, thrust vector control during the landing burn, or structural loads exceeding design limits under dynamic conditions. The failure resulted in the complete destruction of the booster. Ship 35 successfully separated from Booster 14 and continued its ascent trajectory under the power of its vacuum-optimized Raptor engines. The ship achieved its planned suborbital apogee, demonstrating the performance of the upper stage propulsion system. Following engine cutoff, Ship 35 entered a coast phase in space orienting itself for the planned atmospheric re-entry. The re-entry phase requires precise control using aerodynamic surfaces, flaps, and reaction control thrusters to maintain the correct orientation and manage the thermal and structural loads of atmospheric friction. During the initial stages of re-entry, telemetry indicated a loss of stable control. Ship 35 failed to maintain its intended orientation, leading to an uncontrolled tumble as it descended through the atmosphere. This loss of control during re-entry is a critical area for the Starship program, as controlled atmospheric flight is essential for precise landing at a designated site, whether on Earth, the Moon, or Mars. Yeah.
The uncontrolled re-entry subjected Ship 35 to unpredictable aerodynamic forces and thermal stresses, ultimately leading to its structural failure and breakup over the Indian Ocean. Engineering analysis will focus on identifying the cause of the control system failure, which could involve issues with flap actuation, thruster performance, or flight control software. A specific objective for Ship 35 was the deployment of dummy Starlink satellites from its integrated payload bay. This test is crucial for validating the mechanism designed to deploy payloads in orbit or during suborbital trajectories. The payload bay door mechanism was commanded to open during the flight. However, Telemetry and onboard cameras confirmed that the payload bay door failed to open as commanded. This marks the third instance of a payload bay door malfunction during Starship test flights, indicating a persistent technical challenge with this specific system. Successful payload deployment is fundamental to Starship's intended role as a versatile launch vehicle for various missions, including satellite constellation deployment, cargo delivery, and crew transport. Engineers are analyzing data from the door mechanism, including motor currents, sensor readings, and structural feedback to understand the failure mode. Potential causes include issues with the actuation motor, mechanical binding, thermal effects, or control system logic. Resolving this issue is a high priority for future flights carrying actual payloads. Despite the loss of both stages, Starship Flight 9 provided an extensive data set critical for the program's progression. Thousands of parameters related to propulsion, structures, thermal performance, control systems, and flight dynamics were recorded throughout the mission. This data is invaluable for validating or refining engineering models and identifying specific areas requiring design modifications or operational procedure changes. The iterative development approach employed by SpaceX relies heavily on data from test flights, even those ending in failure. Engineers are currently conducting detailed post-flight analysis of all available telemetry, video footage, and recovered debris, if any, to pinpoint the exact sequence of events leading to the anomalies. This rigorous analysis informs the design and manufacturing of subsequent prototypes, such as Booster 15 and Ship 36. Key areas of focus for engineering analysis include Raptor engine performance and reignition reliability, structural integrity under ascent and re-entry loads, the performance and reliability of control surfaces and thrusters, and the functionality of payload mechanisms. The thermal performance during ascent and re-entry is also being assessed, although the uncontrolled nature of Ship 35's re-entry may limit the applicability of some thermal data. Starship Flight 9 is one step in a rapid, iterative development campaign. Previous flights have tested different aspects of the system, from static fire tests and hop tests to integrated flight attempts with varying degrees of success. Each flight provides unique data points on the performance of the integrated system under dynamic flight conditions. The failures experienced during Flight 9, while significant, are not unexpected in the context of developing a vehicle of this scale and complexity. The challenges of reliably landing a super-heavy booster and controlling the re-entry of a large, uncrewed upper stage are substantial engineering hurdles. The persistent issue with the payload bay door also highlights the need for robust, reliable mechanisms in the space environment. Moving forward, SpaceX engineers will implement design changes and operational adjustments based on the Flight 9 data. This will likely involve modifications to the booster's landing sequence and engine control logic, refinements to Ship 35's re-entry control system and flap design, and a redesign or significant modification of the payload bay door mechanism. Subsequent test flights will incorporate these changes and aim to retest the systems that failed during Flight 9. 
The ultimate goal remains a fully reusable, reliable starship system capable of transporting large payloads and humans to Earth orbit, the Moon, and Mars. Starship Flight 9 provided critical, albeit challenging, data points for the ongoing development of SpaceX's next-generation launch system. The rapid, unscheduled disassembly events of both Booster 14 and Ship 35, alongside the payload door malfunction, highlight specific engineering challenges that require further iteration and refinement. This mission underscores the inherent risks and complexities of advanced aerospace development, but also the value of flight testing in identifying and addressing these challenges. For aerospace engineers and space enthusiasts following this program, the detailed analysis of Flight 9's performance and failures offers invaluable insights into the realities of cutting-edge rocket design and operation. We encourage you to delve deeper into the available technical reports and discussions within the aerospace community. Analyze the flight data released by SpaceX, study the observed failure modes, and consider the engineering solutions that might be implemented in future prototypes. Engage with the technical details, discuss potential root causes, and follow the progress of Booster 15 and Ship 36 as SpaceX applies the lessons learned from this mission. Your informed perspective contributes to the collective understanding of this ambitious endeavor. The next minute or so, so we are entering uncontrolled, but again, we're entering into...